Hey, beautiful friends. Welcome back to another episode of the Robin Graham show. So you guys know I'm kind of an SEO geek and I love to use platforms, especially SEO so that we can rank on Google. But one of the interesting things is that when you type in someone's name on Google, quite often what comes up first is their LinkedIn profile. So LinkedIn, like Pinterest, is actually a search engine. It's not a social media platform. And it's not something that you have to fear either. It has some really powerful um weight, I guess, when you start using it to grow your business. And we did an episode way back when on LinkedIn, and I will link that in the show notes, just in case there are some variations in what we're talking about today versus what we talked about back then. Um, that was keep in mind almost three years ago. So like two and a half years ago. So it's been quite a while. So things may have changed. So this is going to be the most up-to-date conversation, but it never hurts to go back and reflect on someone else's perspective as well. So I will include that link in the show notes. And the other thing I will include in the show notes is a link to an episode with Brittany Gardner, because Brittany is who introduced me to the guests that I'm bringing on today. And I think it's just a lovely example of how when we decide to step out of our comfort zone and share our zone of genius with other people and we build relationships we have an opportunity to collaborate, but also expand our community. And it was an honor for me to be introduced by Brittany to Tanya. And so as you listen today, just know that she came to me through a really great source. And we're going to dive into this very topic of using LinkedIn for business growth and as part of your marketing strategy. So without further ado, Tana Bhattacharya, welcome to The Robin Graham Show. Hi, Robin. It's so good to be here. Thanks for having me for that awesome introduction. And I can't wait to get into the topic. Yeah, I'm excited. I think it's one of those things that it's a hidden gem in the online space. Mm -hmm. Some people are using it and they're using it, I guess, killing it, right? So to speak in terms of using their use to grow their audience, grow their network and get clients. So there's a lot of weight here that we can dive into and a lot of um, strategic components. So for those people, especially who maybe have not been on LinkedIn for a while, they can dust off their profile and, and learn a little bit about how they can do that and really show up as their true, authentic personal brand. So before we do that, though, I would love for you, Tanya, to share a little bit about yourself and your journey that brought you to right to where you are today to be a LinkedIn expert. Yeah, I would love to do that. So I like to say that I was kind of raised in the nonprofit field, specifically the mental health field. So I worked for an addiction treatment program for women, pregnant women, and women with their children. I worked there for 12 years as a marketer and a fundraiser, and eventually an executive director. And one of the things that I started doing early on was sitting with our patients and helping them write their recovery narrative, right? I've always been attracted to storytelling, and it was kind of a win-win because as our organization got stories, we could share them with the world and break the stigma of mental health and addiction. And so I noticed something pretty early on. Um, the people that I was, the women that I was talking to, they shared their story, but it was still very much rooted in the shame and the guilt and the, the negative, like the, oh, I'm such a bad mom. Oh, I'm such a bad person part of their story. And as we worked together, we were able to focus on different parts of their story, right? Story, this parts of the story that really showcase their courage and their resilience and their decision to create a better life for themselves and their family. And as they began to share this new version of their story, you know, start, people started to relate, relate to them differently, you know, whether it was at their job, their family, um, just wherever they were. And so what that really showed me was the story that we have about ourselves so clearly dictates and influences the story that other people have about us. And, you know, and at the same time, I saw how people sharing their story about, you know, being a proud woman in long-term recovery changed how people thought about recovery, mental health, and addiction as well. So it's having, sharing their story had this really incredible ripple effect on the world. And then, you know, we were doing that with our patients, but as I looked at our executive team, our board members, you know, myself, as I became an ED, I realized, oh, we need to take a page out of our, out of our patient's book, out of our alumni's book 
and start to share our own story, right? We need to like dust off our LinkedIn's and make sure that as a small provider, we had a really big voice in our space because we were doing great work. And that's where I kind of found out about the power of LinkedIn as an executive director and all of the magical things that it brought me. And I'm happy to talk more about that, but let me pass the mic off to you and, and just see how this is landing with you so far. Oh, you're muted. So first of all, you know that I'm a huge advocate for the mental health arena in general. Yeah. And so I love the work that you're doing. And I love also that you brought the nonprofit world into play here because it is a platform. And it's funny because I'm on the board of directors for face-to-face -face Germantown and, you know, I'll see things on LinkedIn and send them to our executive director. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is brilliant. Or, oh, this is an opportunity for a grant. So I think, you know, as we look at building out our LinkedIn profile to become more visible and have that opportunity to expand our networks, it is so key for growing not only our businesses, but nonprofit nonprofits as well. But I love how you talked about the storytelling because, mm. you know, it, when we look at branding, we look at marketing, it's all about telling a story. And we have to tell the story of our business in order for people to start to relate to us and want to build a connection with us to ultimately build the trust, which determines buying practices. So I, I can't wait. This is going to be such a, a great conversation. And I really look forward to seeing people from our listenership, our audience, to, to see them on LinkedIn, actually implementing some of the things that we talk about today. So um, let's, oh, and you know, the other thing I want to mention is that, you know, you brought in the, the, top, the conversation of mental health and May is Mental Health Awareness mm -hmm. Month. So it's something that, with that, we talk a lot about anxiety and fear. Entrepreneurs have a lot of anxiety. We have a lot of um, emotions because of working alone, feeling isolated, as well as having the sole responsibility of this this big company or you know big I and not I'm not using the term big as in size, large, right. but big as in emotionally taxing endeavor mm. that we're taking on. And I, so I, I love that you brought that into it because I can see how, and, and I can admit this to myself, you know, being an anxious person and, and an introvert too, that the anxiety of putting myself out there in a way that people will see me as an expert can be very intimidating. So I think that looking at this or talking about that a little bit is really a key component for taking that step forward and being present and representing yourself authentically, telling your story, because stories are such an important part of connection. A thousand percent. You, you There's so many things I'd love to dig into deeper here, but you're, you're a thousand percent right. A lot of these barriers come up, especially when we're talking about LinkedIn. I think many people have this preconceived notion that LinkedIn is for you know, for those other people, right? It's for those people with five degrees and 30 years of experience. It's for these people who, you know, are like that go-to person in their space, the Adam Grants of the world, the Brene Browns of the world. And it's like, no, you know, you have a powerful story as well. So many stories and, you know, and, and bringing it back to the nonprofit space, I think this, this story that I'm about to share might bring all of this, all of what you just shared together. So when I was a nonprofit ED, I was, you know, I think I had just turned 30. I didn't necessarily look like a lot of the other executive directors in our space. We were a smaller nonprofit. We had about a $5 million budget, but here in our area in Southern California, there's, you know, much, much larger organizations. And so I had a lot of imposter thoughts about showing up on LinkedIn. I was feeling like who, like people were going to think, who does she think she is? You know, I, or I thought, you know, there was going to be absolute crickets when I started posting. But I was like, you know, and I was so busy, you know, day started at 7 a.m. with a donor breakfast. They would end at 7 p.m. with a grant reception. And so there was a lot going on. A lot of the things that I I'm sure that your readers or th listeners are thinking about right now. Oh, I don't have the time. I don't have the strategy. I have, there's so many self-living beliefs going on. But I challenged myself to tell one interesting story per week, just one, just one. And during that same time, I would just start engaging with a couple of people, right? Potential sponsors for our fundraising event, 
Um, I would leave a thoughtful comment on a local business influencer's post. And honestly, this LinkedIn work, this engagement work, it felt a little bit inconsequential at first. But after about a month, and definitely after about a quarter, things really started to change. You know, I started getting invited to PR opportunities without pitching. Local corporate leaders started to reach out to us to ask how they could get involved in our fundraising events. You know, our um, addiction treatment center started getting organic referrals from doctors, therapists, interventionists, um, HR leaders. And so what I realized is LinkedIn was really the place to access those movers and shakers. Yes. And everybody's there to help out. Like people are there on LinkedIn to build a network of people that they can support. People are really kind on LinkedIn. It's not a mm-hmm. Twitter, right? It's not, it's right. a place where people just want to support each other. So yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I love that perspective. And um, something I find interesting too, when you talk about using LinkedIn and you talked about you talk about telling those stories and you talk about imposter syndrome is that you are the CEO of your Mm. business as an entrepreneur. So if you're looking at LinkedIn as a place where only CEOs and executives are, pull up your seat to the table because you belong there. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. Yeah. So, okay. So let's dive in. So for those people listening who and and this is kind of um, uncanny timing because yesterday I was in my mastermind and this is a great story where we're talking and, you know, I, I have my purpose to results method is so all encompassing, right? But it's been really hard for me to say exactly what my title is because I do so many different things under this umbrella and am I a business coach? Am I a brand strategist or whatever? And At the end of the day, we were all talking in the, you know, this is why I love group coaching so much is that we're talking about this and I'm getting all these opinions and so many of the words that I've been using in my copy that I've used, you know, all along written blog post about we're coming in as what other people saw me as and everything. And it's like, at the end of the day, I'm really a marketing and lead generation strategist. Mm -hmm. So, but you think about that. And you think about how I'm not your typical coach, right? So I went through my LinkedIn profile and I had not updated it in so long. Mm. Everything was a mess. I'm surprised you didn't look at my LinkedIn profile and be like, (laughs) well, I don't want to be on her show. She's a hot mess because it was a mess. And so I spent some time yesterday really going through and updating, you know, the descriptions, what I do, how I do it changing the title. And in my title, I even put not your typical business coach, because when you factor in mindset, you factor in strategy, you factor in accountability, you factor in all these things that I do. It's I'm not your typical business coach. And I I love that we can add a personal flair to it. And I was afraid to do that for the longest Mm -hmm. time, because how are people going to see me? Well, are they even going to understand? And, you know, so having that clarity, which, you know, we talk about with personal branding, with marketing, you have to start from a place with clarity, a place of clarity. But when you do that, you can put yourself out there in a way that's truly authentic, but this is great, uh, a great landscape, a great, I guess, real estate to be able to showcase who you are and what you do. Absolutely. And don't be afraid to do that. I love that you are adding these additional pieces about yourself that are so authentic and true to you. Because as you know, as a, as you know, somebody who's such an expert in branding, the right people will start to lean in even more deeply and the wrong people will self-select out. And yes. that's a great thing because you don't necessarily want to serve everybody. So be you. Right. 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 And if you're talking to everyone, you're basically talking to no one. So if your exactly. marketing strategy is not specific to those people that you want to work with, you're not going to get anywhere. Okay. So we kind of digressed a little bit, but let's talk about if you, if you haven't been on LinkedIn for a while, what are those steps you can take? Like what are the first pieces of strategy that you can, or I should say those components that you can address strategically? Yes. Yes. In terms of your profile. Okay. So, and this is so important because I do want to just share that you are hundred percent right. That when you Google yourself, your LinkedIn is going to be one of the top things that come up because LinkedIn is such a trusted 
sight in the eyes of Google. So if you're listening right now and you're like, you know, I'm never really going to use LinkedIn anyway, just update your profile because it is showing up when people are searching for you. Okay. So if you have, you know, 30 minutes, 45 minutes to set aside to update and dust off your LinkedIn profile, these are some of the things that I would do first of all. So if, especially if it's been a while, I would turn on a mode that recently came out in the last year or so called creator mode. You'll see a little toggle um, right about on the middle of your screen once you go onto your page and you'll see a toggle where you can turn on creator mode. So creator mode is a mode of LinkedIn that is um, you can turn on and off. But I like to think everybody who is showing up and building a brand on LinkedIn is a creator. Whether or not that title really kind of fits for you in this moment or not, I I encourage you to turn it on because you get access to a whole host of deeper analytics so that you can see what's working, what's not working, who's visiting your site or your LinkedIn profile page, et cetera. And you get a couple of additional um, opportunities to really supercharge your page. You get access to add a clickable link on the top of your page that you can funnel people to your lead magnet, to your website, to book a call with you, right? And that kind of turns your LinkedIn into almost like a one-page website for you. People can find you get right to where they need to go. And you two are off on your merry way. We're working together. Um, and so I would turn on creator mode and that will give you a host of additional options. Second, you know, just like Robin was saying, I would look at your headline and the automatic uh, thing that LinkedIn does is it puts your title. Like it'll say, you know, founder at XYZ company or director of operations at ABC company. Now, LinkedIn if I were to sum up my philosophy around LinkedIn in one word, one line, it would be that you're there to be a resource, not a resume. And I think so often people show up as a resume on LinkedIn. And that makes sense because that's what LinkedIn was traditionally used for. You know, it was there so that people could find a job. But it's not really, as an entrepreneur, as a thought-leading, expertise-based entrepreneur, small business, LinkedIn is a great place to build a brand. So in terms of your headline. I would get really specific on what it is that you do. And uh, Robin, tell me again what you're what you changed your headline to because I loved it. Well, I'm thinking I'm thinking now. Do I need to change it again? But I said <laughs> not your I said not your typical business coach. I love that. I love that. So add personality into it, right? Because your headline, as you move around the platform and leave comments for other people, that headline is going to follow you around. It's almost like your name tag on, on LinkedIn. And so you wanted to attract the people you most want to attract. So I really do love not your average business coach. Um, and I would get really specific on what it is that you do. You know, so for mine, it's like, it's my, I, I help statement, right? So it's like, I teach social impact entrepreneurs, how to build trust and community through brand storytelling on LinkedIn. So it's like, somebody's going to be very clear about what I do. Um, and if they're looking for brand storytelling in that moment, they're going to, they're going to find me fun fact, fun story. I once said happy birthday to somebody that I used to work with in an old life. I just said happy birthday. I left a comment and her contact saw from my headline that I did brand storytelling, reached out to me uh, on LinkedIn and said, this is such a secret, like a uh, serendipitous moment. I literally just, I don't know you. I just saw your headline. We are literally doing a whole brand refresh. And part of that is my founder story. Like, can we work together? So your headline does have a lot of magic potential there, right? So I would look at your headline, make sure that it has some pizzazz, it, it showcases who you are, and it's clear about what you specifically do, right? So mm -hmm. your headline's important. Then I would go down to your featured section. And so if it's been a while since you've dusted off your LinkedIn, you might not even know about the featured section, because it's kind of newer, like in the last couple of years. This is a space where you can add links, PDFs, articles, you can highlight different LinkedIn posts you've done. Really, this is a place to showcase what you are proud of, right? So I have a link directly to my website as the first one. I have a link to a podcast. So like when this podcast comes out, I can put this on my featured section so people can see that immediately. I have um, a LinkedIn post that really showcases like my philosophy, what I believe in. So this is a place, it's almost like a you know, like a bulletin board where people, when they walk right into your shop, which is your LinkedIn profile in this case, they see exactly what you have to offer, right? They see exactly your vibe. So I would, I would fill out your featured section. That's great real estate. Um, I would really look at your about section because your about section is, is again, not where you put your bio. It's not where you copy and paste your, your, you know, your resume, 
It could have pieces of your bio, of course, but I love this to read as your story. I love this to be the powerful, hard-hitting founder story of why you do what you do, what you went through to now be the guide that you are for other people. You know, um, what is the problem that you solve, right? Like start right off with the problem that you solve so that people immediately know whether they want to keep reading or not. You know, do you solve their problem? Um, and, you know, come and look at my profile if you want to see an example. The Your About section is such a powerful space to really attract people with your story. Um, then I would take a little bit of time to ask people for recommendations. So recommendations are kind of like a reference, if you will, but um, they're social proof, right? They're testimonials and they're really powerful social proof because you can't make these up. And I'm not saying anyone's making up testimonials, that's not what I'm saying, but somebody else has to leave you a recommendation with their LinkedIn profile. So there's a little bit of like trust there, you know, someone took the time, you know, so I would take a little bit of time and ask, you know, three to five past clients who are really ideal clients, people who really are kind of like that avatar of people you want to serve more of and um, ask them to leave you a recommendation. And um, let me just call up LinkedIn in my mind here. If you go to their profile, there's a little button that says more. You can click on that. And in the drop down that comes up, there's a place to say, there's a place to click request recommendation. And then you can do it right from there. Mm -hmm. So those are some of the off the bat things. If you have like 30 minutes or so to dust off your profile, that's what I would encourage everybody to do today. Oh, okay. These are great. And it's not so overwhelming. I think right. probably for those people who maybe don't feel, don't believe that they're creative and that they're mm. not a good writer, writing that about section may be the hardest, but just like Tanya said, go to her profile and look at what she's written and get an idea. I probably have to like go back. Mine doesn't really tell the story, but it does talk about what I do and who I work with. So it, it's kind of there, but I probably could beef it up just a little bit. So um, if you want to look at mine, you can look at mine. But again, I think Tanya's would probably be the better way to do it. So Tanya, when we think about LinkedIn and the power that it actually has in terms of getting us in front of other people, and, and when I say other people, I mean potential clients, like growing yeah. our opportunity for lead generation. Um, so when we talk about that, how much time do we have to invest to make this work for us? Yeah, I love this question because I have kind of a different um, perspective than some other LinkedIn trainers out there. So I have this philosophy about being lazy on LinkedIn. And that's a little tongue in cheek because nobody's lazy. Maybe a better term would be life first, but I just started saying lazy and everybody loved it. So I just went with it. I truly believe, and I'll tell you why in a second, that you can just show up once a week on LinkedIn with a really intentional hour that you have on your calendar each week that doesn't, you know, you, 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 do, you it's protected time. You make sure you do it because consistency is important if you're going to show up once a week. Um, but I believe you can show up once a week on LinkedIn and have amazing results. And there's a couple of reasons why. So there's at this point over 800 million active users on LinkedIn. And now Instagram has over a billion. So Instagram does have more people technically on there. But here's the really magical thing about LinkedIn. Less than 5% of active LinkedIn users post content. Now they're still active. So they're logging on, they're lurking, they're lurking in luxury. They're checking out what's happening. They're Maybe they're reposting some stuff here and there, but they are watching, they're listening, they're consuming, they're building trust in what people who are posting have to share. And because so few people are actively posting their own content, you have a really powerful chance to show up and shine without needing to show up every day. If you show up once a week, that content is going to have a really long shelf life and continue to show up days after that initial post. I mean, I'm still getting engagement on posts I did like weeks ago. Like it just mm -hmm. keeps coming up. It's really amazing. And so I encourage my clients to be lazy on LinkedIn and find a, a, an hour on their calendar. I like to do Wednesday mornings just because that's what I do. And, and I would keep relatively consistent. I think the consistency helps. Um, and I encourage people to post a post that ideally they have batched, if that works for them. Um, after they post their post, stay on the platform a little bit longer because LinkedIn does love dwell time. It loves it when you're staying on the platform. You're that your posts do better when you stay on the platform after you've posted it. 
and start engaging with the people who have engaged in your last post. Start leaving comments on, you know, 10 people that are in your field that are thought leading entrepreneurs, maybe they're competitors, maybe they are past clients, you know, maybe create a list of 25 like VIPs on LinkedIn that you really want to build a relationship with and leave them comments, send them a message, send them an audio message. A lot of people don't know you can send audio messages on LinkedIn. And that's a really powerful way to build trust because then people hear your voice, right? Um, yeah. So just commit to that one hour per week and just be intentional about your, about what you're doing on there. And over time, you know, I love atomic habits. I love James clear that habit is going to ripple out in snowball into this, this, this powerful thought leadership brand on LinkedIn. And it's going to happen quicker than you think, you know, if you're engaging with people, building community and showing up with your own content at least once per week. And, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't second guess the con over, overthink the content. I'm happy to talk more about content if you want, but how does that lazy on LinkedIn piece land with you, Robin? Well, I like it, <laughs> but, it, it but you know what I like about it is that um, you give yourself the opportunity to be present, but not consume your week. Yes. Whereas with Instagram and you know, the listeners know, I, I am not about building your business or growing your business on Instagram. I like to build relationships on Instagram, but I believe that SEO and search engine optimization, Pinterest, LinkedIn are much more powerful tools when we're talking about building a foundation for long-term success. So, yeah. you know, for me, this resonates really um, powerfully, so to speak, because I don't want to spend hours and hours and hours engaging. However, I do like to go on and I do like to support, like, like I could support you. I could support other guests that have been on the show. I could support other, you know, colleagues or my peers. And I think that's a nice way too to show LinkedIn that, Hey, I I'm here. I'm not going anywhere. And so when I go on, maybe once I do probably go on, like just once a day, I'll, I'll go on and just kind of see what's going on. Anybody post inter anything interesting. And that, and then I will, you know, like comment or even share or repost some things, because I think it does help you stay front of mind. But I think the key for LinkedIn is when, and I don't know what the stats are, maybe you can address this, but for Instagram, you know, and Facebook, only 2% of your audience, your followers are going to see what you put out there with mm. LinkedIn. When you comment the people the person who did the post, their entire community of contacts have an opportunity to see that you liked their post and that you commented. I'm always getting, if I comment on someone's post that I really liked or respected and, and want to you know engage with, then I'm getting notifications that additional people commented. So that means that those people are getting notifications when I do that. And to me, that just adds a huge opportunity that you don't have anywhere else to tap into other people's communities without having to spend a ton of time. Absolutely. I, I think of LinkedIn sometimes as a really easeful, but 24-7, 365 sort of like networking event or conference or, or trade show, if you will, that you can pop in and out of anytime you want. And I think of leaving a, a thoughtful comment on someone else's post as almost like raising your hand after a breakout session and leaving a really like saying something really powerful because everyone in that breakout session is going to see that and maybe come up to you afterwards and say, oh, that yeah. was really neat. And you build a relationship. So it is a public way to really find new people. And mm -hmm. what you just said is so perfect because, and I'm going to give another example of that. When you share on LinkedIn, the people who are commenting on you, the poster gets access, if you will, to that commenter's entire network as well. Mm -hmm. So I'll give you an example. And, you know, people who are listening, feel free to steal this strategy. So on Sundays, I have a camp, like a thing called the um, Sunday Social Impact Stories. And I'm I kind of started it because we all get, you know, uh, Sunday scaries and Sundays can be hard. So on Sunday afternoons, I post a really inspiring highlight of a client that I've worked with. And I share their story, their vision, their a picture of them. I share the work that they're doing in the world. And it's really meant to be a highlight of them. But because I do thought leadership work on LinkedIn, it, it you know, a, like a secondary benefit is that I get to show off the work that, you know, I do and why it's important. 
And as a result, because that person is tagged, they usually leave a comment. And what happens is the people in their world, in their matrix and their spider web start to see me, even if I don't know them. And so the more that you can share about your clients, the more that you can amplify other people, the more that you can share stories about the partnerships and the collaborations you're doing with people, your audience is just going to exponentify. I don't know if that's a word, but let's use it. It's just going to, it's just going to grow and grow and grow with the right people because chances are the people that you are working with now have people in their networks that you also want to work with. Their values aligned. They are they're just good people, right? By virtue of being connected to people you already like. So mm -hmm. LinkedIn is just an organically powerful way to just continue to meet new people that are like the ones you already work with. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Tanya, we could talk on and on and on because even as you're talking, I'm thinking of additional things that I could ask or say, but we're out of time because oh everybody's going to be everybody's going to be like, <laughs> "Oh my gosh, this is such a long episode," which I don't mind as long as we're providing value. But yeah. I think it's important to um, just emphasize that it's not a platform to be afraid of. It's mm -hmm. an opportunity for growth. It's an opportunity for connection. It opens the door to collaboration. And even if you're a podcaster, like you just said, Tanya, when I share this episode, I'm going to tag you. When you share yeah. it, you're going to tag me. And that right. opens both of our, our doors, both of our lives to much more opportunity for connection and referrals, collaborations, all those yummy things that go into marketing our businesses. Yes, a hundred percent. And I'll probably tag Brittany and I'll tag some people who need to listen to the episode. And so the reach will just continue to grow and grow and grow. And sometimes we don't know the full extent. Actually, we never know the full extent of our reach, but there are so many people watching and listening and building trust. And it's, it's, we get to, we get to just trust the process sometimes because yeah. two years later they reach out and they say, I've been looking at your LinkedIn for years and I'm ready now, right? That happens mm -hmm. all the time. Oh, so yeah. keep going. Yeah. yeah. So one last question, yeah. because we know that Instagram has taken life down the um, real path, right? Mm -hmm. To do video, constantly do video. What are your thoughts on LinkedIn? Is that something we have to do in order to gain traction? Or can we do our static post or maybe like an audiogram or a videogram of our, you know, short clips of the podcast episodes? What are your thoughts on the necessity of going live and doing video? It's a great question. It's one I've been thinking about a lot. You know, I have tried doing a couple of short form videos as its, as its own post. I, and if you are going to share videos, I do just want to say, make sure to upload them natively. Don't use a link to YouTube or Vimeo because link external links on LinkedIn are going to hurt your reach from an algorithm perspective. Be sure to mm -hmm. upload that video. But that being said, you know, I haven't seen videos do extraordinarily well on LinkedIn um, compared to other platforms. That being said, I'm a big fan of testing things out. Test a couple of videos, see how your audience reacts, right? Mm -hmm. And I mean, if you're, you know, if you're a video strategist, of course, do videos because you want to show and tell about your services. I would say test it out, see if it works. I personally, for my audience, have not seen videos do great. That doesn't mean it's not going to work for your audience. And there are other opportunities to be on video that aren't just like the video posts. I recently did my first LinkedIn Live and Robin, I'd actually love to invite you to do a LinkedIn Live with me I'd if you'd it. like to. Yeah. Um, they're a lot of fun. And that's a way to go live, show your face, build trust while almost making it more of an event and maybe even a collaboration, right? So mm -hmm. if you're trying to do videos, maybe lean on LinkedIn Lives and see how, how that goes for you. They're a lot of mm. fun. I yeah. love that. Okay. So now you just led me to one last question because this has been somewhat of a controversy, I think. So to link in your post or to link in the comments. So if you're yeah. sending someone to a blog post to read, do you put that in the actual post or do you put that in the comments? Because my brain is like, well, that's just an inconvenience if now they have to scroll down to the comments to click on the link. But if I put it right here, they see it. But is that being penalized by LinkedIn, right. so to speak. Right. Oh, this is a question that like keeps me up at night sometimes because yes, if you do put an external link in your post, LinkedIn does penalize it. Um, I don't know the exact percentage. Somebody named um, Richard Diblum, I believe, uh, did, did some like studies around this, anecdotal studies, and he could actually see there's a certain percentage decrease in the posts where he put an ex external link. 
That being said, everything's about a balance and sometimes it's about accessibility, right? Sometimes that's about being lazy on LinkedIn and pre-scheduling your post because you're on vacation and you're never going to go back and add a comment, right? So it's like, do what feels right for you. And I think even if, you know, let's say 10%, 20% less people see the post, but it's easier for them to get to the resource, maybe it's kind of a balance, right? Maybe it's kind of a win-win. So, well, you know, yeah. yeah. And, and like yeah. for me, it's it's a time factor because all of our content, my assistant posts it, right. uh, schedules it. So if she's posting that and adding the link into, you know, our platform where she schedules it, then yeah. somebody has to go back in and put the link there. And so that's added yeah. time, right? Right. Right. And at the end of the day, yes, the algorithm is there. Yes, we should be aware of the algorithm. But at the same time, like my friend calls it the ego rhythm. Um, in some ways, the algorithm is is there to just make sure that we get all these engagement metrics. Like we're, we're trying to game the algorithm to get as many likes as possible. And that's not always the goal, right? I truly, truly trust and believe that the right people, the right ideal client is going to find our content. They're going mm-hmm. to look forward to seeing our content and make sure that they do what they need to do to see it, even if there's an external link in there, you know? So at the end of the day, my advice to people is, you know, do what is right for you. And if that means being easeful and just pre-scheduling a post with the link in there, just do that. Just do that. Because over time, the bright people are going to see your content, you know? That's it's right. Fine. And I think it's it's just important to be there in the first place. Yes. Yes. A hundred percent. We have touched on a lot. Um, <laughs> so anybody who hasn't been on LinkedIn for a while, I, I can't wait to see what you do, but be sure and, and connect with us. Like, you know, I'm the Robin Graham on LinkedIn and Tanya, what is your handle on LinkedIn? It's just my name. It's Tanya Bhattacharya. <laughs> And I'll have her name in the show notes, everybody. So it's a long one and I'll be sure and spell it right so you can find her. But um, connect with both of us on LinkedIn because you never know what you might learn or, you know, who is in our networks that may then be your ideal client. So Tanya, where can the listeners, obviously they can connect with you on LinkedIn, but where else can they connect with you and learn more about you and get to know you even better? Yeah. So definitely LinkedIn. The other place that you can find me is actually my podcast. It's called the campfire circle because I have this dream of dismantling the boardroom table as the ultimate space of leadership and instead replacing it with a campfire circle, because that's where we share our stories. That's where we huddle together with community. And that's where there's always a seat, right? There's always room. Even if you have to sit on a, on a log or something, there's always a space for you. Um, so I would say the campfire circle is the other place to find me and, and definitely LinkedIn. Those are the two places. Awesome. Thank you so much for being here. This was a wealth of information. You're a ray of sunshine and I truly enjoyed it. So listeners, if you enjoyed this episode and found it helpful, please leave us a rating and review and please share it with anybody else in your network, your circles that may be wanting to grow their network and grow their business in an easier way. LinkedIn will help you be seen online. Like we said, it's basically a one component of search engine optimization. So I will see you all over on LinkedIn. Have a great day and I'll see y'all next week.